So you're thinking about putting a V8 in an S10. And sure, you can figure out engine mounts, transmission, and you know, physically jamming it in there. But there's one thing that everyone kind of gets hung up on, including myself, and it really has to be just right the first time. And that is, where does all of this stuff go? Okay, so we're gonna jump into what wires go where, what plugs into what, what do you have to change? What do you not have to change? So by the end of this video, you should have a good idea of how your wiring harness is gonna have to be laid out to do a swap like this. And uh, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna have a bunch of useful stuff all posted there that didn't fit into the normal video, like some wiring diagrams and stuff that should help you no matter what motor you're putting in one of these. So it's all coming up, stick around. What's going on guys? So if you've been following along, you know we're in the middle of doing our really exciting V8 swap on our 03 yellow S10 ZR2. The 03 part's important and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Doing the 57 swap, mine was a 4.3 V6 to begin with, so that's what this is all based off of. But I'm also gonna touch on if you started from a four cylinder or if you're doing an LS swap as well, so. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the wiring, we have to start off talking about the tuning because none of the wiring matters if the computer program's not right. Uh, so with that being said, most of these swaps are gonna be based off the silver computer. Um, let me flip this over. The 0411 silver computer. So you remember me saying that this truck was an 03, the 0411s apparently ran around 99 to 02. So mine being an 03, even though the computer looked the same, it actually ended in a different number. And uh, that ended with basically issues of trying to tune it. And I basically just had to get another computer that was an 0411 and then have that reprogrammed. So that was a pretty straightforward. It was just kind of annoying. Um, if you have an older S10 that has the black box, you're going to have to convert to one of these. That's a little bit of wiring in itself. No matter what, we're going to be swapping wiring pins around in here. That is actually what most, if you, if you already have an S10 from that time period with one of these computers, then you're set. You just need to get a reflash. So speaking of reflashes... This is basically going to be reprogrammed as an express van. So it's kind of funny because it's not really what you think of when you think of a hot rod. But during that time period, they also had the same computer. And obviously these had that computer. But they had not only this, the v, well, the old engine, the V6, but they also had the 5.7 in there. So they have the programming available on this computer, which is already made to work with this. It's the same generation. So most of things are the same and you basically tune it from there. Now you, you would have a custom tune, but it's all based off the express van. You could maybe do the stock express van tune, but you're probably gonna have to change a few things and you might as well just get a custom tune. I went through PCM for less. Um, I've went through them before and the guy seems to know what he's doing. We're see if this all fires up correctly. Um, but I would recommend them. There's other places out there. You can do your research. Okay, so now we can actually start getting into the harness of this. Um, basically what's changing, what's not changing, and it's more or less actually what you're adding to it and then some things get moved around on the pin side of it. So most people, if you've looked into this, you know you have to add two extra injector wires for two more injectors, because you have two more cylinders. And yes, that is right, but there's a little more to it than that. 
So I'll show you those now. Those are actually, those. they're all wrapped up, but there's two wires there. This is the V8 plug. You're going to need this because the V6 one is different. So if you're pulling this at a junkyard, just make sure you have that plug there. Uh, you have to depen this. You have to put your six injectors in the right places. And I'll have a diagram to help you out with that. But make sure those are in the right places. Then add your two extra ones. And these are actually ground wires. And then you're going to have a bunch of pink wires in here. It's going to be a big ball of wires. But your pink ones are basically just ignition on power. And you're just going to tap the power from those two extra ones into pretty much any of those other pink wires. So, And then that's pretty much done right here once you get it all cleaned up and put back together. And then you run those down. And there's going to be some pin changes on the plug. Again, I'll cover that with the diagrams. I think injector one stays the same, but pretty much all the other ones, they actually trade places and they all kind of jump around. You might have to extend some wires if you can't get them to reach, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Changing the pins on this is actually even easier. It's You can pretty much just do it like bare hands. Um, so that's pretty much... There, that's the injection. So that's two wires we've added so far. Okay, so now that's done. Down to number three wire, which is technically two wires, but it's one wire. Now I had to do a little bit of digging to figure this part out. The O2 sensors, because we're remember we're going to a express van tune, and it's mostly the same, but there is some changes. So... Your O2 sensors on the S10, they are controlled through the PCM. On the express van, they're just controlled on like an ignition on. When you turn the van on, the heaters are just on. So basically, trading to this express van tune, they just don't work now. Um, and that can cause you some tunability and running issues there. So, to get around that those they have power already it comes from a fuse that's in here but just basically they need to be grounded for them to work so i found those two pins i'm gonna list those two pins on the screen and i basically wide them together into just a random wire i believe it's this guy right here so i have one wire connected to both of those because I'm only worried about these two O2 sensors, not the one like post-cat. Um, but we have this wire, and I ran it down. It goes down the harness, comes down, and I'm going to try to give you a shot of this. I actually grounded it right on the side of the alternator there. It was just the clean spot that I found that was nearby. So you could do whatever you like there, but that's what I did. I was already messing with this wire harness anyway, so I just I just routed it that way. So now, when we turn the key forward, those O2 sensors should just be hot all the time. Okay, so we're up to three wires added now. Um, technically four, but three. There is a fourth that you kind of have to add, but I did it in a way to where I more or less just extended it. So on the four three, the NOx sensor is different than on the 5.7. Um, the 5.7 has a one-wire NOx sensor. The 4.3 has a two-wire NOx sensor, and they're in totally different places. So the 4.3 is actually right behind the distributor. It's a, it's a little black plug, but it's a two-pin plug. Um, now, there's a, I believe, black wire and a blue wire. The black is basically a ground. It, it's not anything once you swap to the express van tune. It's just a dead wire. So I basically covered that. I cut the plug off, covered the black wire up with some liquid electrical tape, and then I extended the blue wire and I ran that down the harness here. And it comes down and it follows this wire. This guy goes down to the starter and a few other things we're going to get into. And I ran that down, and the knock sensor is actually near the starter down there. So now the actual sensor wire 
is our one wire for our one wire knock sensor, but it's not in the right place on the plug anymore. So I'm gonna put up the pin location for that. Okay, are you guys still with me? So hopefully this is making sense to you. If, it, if this is helpful at all, please hit that like button down there. It helps me out a ton and I help get this video out there. So thank you for doing that. So that is the hardest parts of that. There's still more, but that's the hardest like technical things I had to figure out. Now the most the, the rest of this is kind of just honestly just kind of annoying stuff. Uh, what I mean by that is like this coolant temp sensor, uh, the wire. Remember this engine has grown now. It just it literally wouldn't reach it. it I was like stretching the wire to the max to try to get the plug in. Um, the clip was broken on here, so this one I actually replaced the pigtail and just I made the wire longer. I got the wire loom and all that stuff, tape. Um, you know, it has like heat shrink butt connectors so nothing's exposed um, and just made that longer. Now, there's a few other things you got to basically just do that too. Um, this harness coming down that I was talking about, there's a lot going on with this. Not only did we add that ground, um, that exits there, and then this comes down. You have your crank position sensor. That wouldn't reach anymore, so I had to extend all of those wires for that sensor down there. And then this harness also goes back to the starter. So I had to extend that because that wouldn't reach that far. Um, and then also, our uh, remember our new knock wire sensor is hitching a ride through this too. Because that knock sensor is right on the path to the starter. So that's pretty straightforward. You can't see it because I, I do have it tidied up as best as I could. I wanted it to not just look nice. I, I'm not that worried about that. But... It's, you know, the factory puts all this armor and stuff on here for a reason. It keeps things protected. Um, so I definitely suggest taking some time and trying to do it right. Okay, so that is actually pretty much it. That's, again, that's why I'm doing this one, because it is really straightforward. It's crazy. I, it would have been awesome if they put these in here from the factory. Um, but, you know, space limitations, I, I can see why they didn't. Um... There is another extra thing we can do that you're not going to see on the stock wire harness for either one of these, and that is electric fans. So you can imagine why we'd want to ditch the mechanical fan. Yeah, they're reliable, but we just don't have room for it unless we really get crazy with our cutting and yeah. So you can add electric fan control. It is in the computer's programming. Um, it's up to your tuner if he can get that activated for you. Suppose I did ask for it. Supposedly mine is enabled and I'll have to update you on if all of this works. What I found for pen locations, okay, we have two electric fan controls and I already got these wires in here while I had the I I didn't want to I, I wanted to just get all this wiring done so I could move on um so we have a low fan this would be I'm planning on doing a dual fan I think that's what most people would be doing it's two smaller fans so you would have a low fan this would come on first and then if it started to overheat a little bit more then this red wire would connect to the second fan and the first fan. It basically would just turn both of them on. You know, this goes to the relays, obviously, not the fans. But so low fan, high fan, and then when you turn the AC on, you want all of the fans you can get because you need all that airflow for the AC and the truck to not overheat and all that stuff. So the pin locations for those, I'm going to tell you right now on the blue plug. It's going to be 42, okay? And then for the high fan on the red plug is, if I can see it, 33. So 
by the way, one of these, I can't remember which one it was, actually had green clips on it because I technically had the newer computer. Um, but I got, I, I almost forgot to mention this. Make sure, chop a pair of these off of an 0411 or a similar one. So that way you have all these extra pins and everything that you can use. Um, like I said, mine actually had a green one and I just took the red or whatever it was and I just swapped the, the colors over so it plugs into the computer now. So that was actually pretty cool and straightforward. So just, just a tip there in case you know, if all you can find is newer ones, you can still cut the harnesses off of there. If you can get an express van harness, then maybe you can like compare it directly of like what color wires are where. That's actually what I was able to do. Um, but you're gonna want a pair of those and you're gonna make sure you have this plug here. Okay, so that was pretty much everything that I had to do to make mine work. Now, if you're starting from a four cylinder, from what I understand, you're probably gonna be best off getting this harness like a v6 harness because you see how it's pretty straightforward if you have the v6 harness the four cylinders just not similar at all um just if you can find one at a junkyard if that's not an option you might be able to find actually i'm a little more sure you should be able to find an aftermarket conversion harness uh just some light googling you should be able to find what you need a lot of people like turning these into hot rods that stuff is out there um but if you have a v6 one there's no reason you can just convert this one that's the way to go for sure uh to save you money if you're doing an ls now it gets more complicated now i think from what i understand you're still going to be doing the 0411 but you're going to have to do there's just a lot of things that's different um, that's why I strayed away from it. LS's are, are cool, don't get me wrong, but there's just a lot more for what I wanted to do with this. Aftermarket wiring harness is probably going to be your friend there, and I know those are out there. So yeah, if you're doing this conversion, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, I had to do a lot of digging to figure this stuff out initially, but now since... It's all laid out and it's an A and B, connect the dots, move this pin to that pin. It's pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully this is helpful as I don't do the straight DIY stuff all the time. So if it was, consider hitting the like button. Um, if I missed anything, drop a comment down there and I'm gonna go ahead and post up whatever diagrams I have left as promised. Okay guys, so if you want to check this project out, consider checking out the channel. Link's in the description below. Uh, you can click my face coming up or watch these next couple videos coming up. So that's all I got for now. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you the next one.